Okay, so here we go. Elevation up. So I start off by combing the hair nice and clean. And I section out a gigantic curved section that begins in the front and ends in the opposite side at the nape. So here, I'll over direct the hair strongly up and I'm actually cutting in a graduated line. The reason why the angle for my graduation was chosen is I want the hair to like tuck under. I find that with this technique, if I and or texture, if I layered the hair, it would have a strong tendency to flip. So that graduation encourages the hair when it falls naturally to give it that nice smooth bevel. Okay, so with each section, I'll start to elevate the hair slightly higher and I'll pull the hair a little bit more straight out. So what I mean by this is a, with the very first section, the over direction was stronger and the elevation was a little bit lighter. So with each progressive section, I'm in gradually increasing the elevation and I'm, I become more close to combing the hair straight out square. So kind of think of in three dimensional, um, in a 3D sense, I'm building an oval shape. Okay, you can always work in small, manageable sections. Be aware of your stroke count. Again, there's no point to come out the same section 100,000 times. Two to three times should do the trick. Okay, so again, increasing elevation, following the guideline. Now I'm cutting in a graduated shape between my fingers. Again, because I want I don't want the hair to flip, I want it to like bevel under or fall fall sleeker. Okay, now this section is right after this section, the head shape will start to round. So one way to compensate for this is I'm gonna over direct onto the last section. So here I'm starting to build up a little bit of weight. I'm building up a slight corner, okay, and as I approach the back side of this haircut, I can always um, soften off that corner or remove it. Okay, and then right, right here at this section, it's gigantic, right? So it leads all the way into the nape. So here, notice how I'm over directing onto that final section. Here, I want to build up that weight. So I want my graduation to the front to go from shorter to longer. So actually the shortest length will be my guideline length. And then also, when you're approaching this technique in the back, you always have to take con into consideration the, your guests' like head shape. Their occipital bone, if their head's a bit wide, you may need to change the angle to narrow it out. And again, so in the back, it's the same technique. So here I'm over directing to the same point. So here I'm building up that weight. And notice how with that section, which is like one long, smooth comb out. Then I like like after hitting a section to comb the hair to natural fall and just visually assess the shape that I'm creating. Okay, and the next section, I'll approach it in the same manner. So again, here we're building up our weight through over direction. And also when you're over directing the hair, I'm also building another shape. So over direction, I'm actually, when the hair falls naturally, I'm building a graduated shape because my shape will start working from shorter to longer through this over direction. So you have graduation in the fingers, more graduation through over direction, and then the graduation that we're getting through elevation. So we're building graduation in three different forms. Okay, another key point here. Um, to help you with your consistency, when you elevate the hair to the same point, what I really recommend is that, say for example, in this technique here, I'm approaching the back of the haircut by standing behind the occipital bone. So if I want to consistently over direct every section to the same point, what will dramatically assist me is if it, if, when my body position is also at the same point 
throughout the haircut. Like my feet are planted and if I'm moving their minor movements, basically through my hip. So I stay stationary much more. Okay, so pay attention here. Yeah, so not too much movement. If here I need to move, I move the chair. So my feet, again, they're planted in the same place. And when I bend, I'll actually like lower my knees and then I'll extend my body out so I get more consistency with my stroke. And the less physical movements that I'm making will actually make my target area to cut my guideline at much more accurate. So again, less is more. Okay, so now, my challenge here on the left side is to cut it exactly as I cut the right side. So here I have to make sure that my elevation with my guideline section is 100% the same elevation as with the right side. My finger angle also has to be 100% the exact finger angle. It sounds easy, but when you actually get into the nitty gritty and you start paying attention to these type of details, it's quite challenging. And make sure you comb the hair smooth from roots to ends. So as I think, challenging is fine. Challenging means it's challenging. It doesn't mean it's impossible. And there are a lot of niche little secrets that you can throw into your cutting repertoire today to dramatically improve. And notice how when I stroke the hair, my hand movements aren't rushed. They're very slow and intentional. This is because at the same time that I'm combing the hair out, my eyes are constantly running up and down that shaft that I just combed to make sure that the hair that I comb, the strands are parallel to the strands of my cutting comb. If there's a snag, that equates to additional length and uneven pieces in your guideline. So again, I comb the hair out clean and here I'm preparing for cutting. I just get in there, my eyes are right there, just checking, checking, checking. My eyes are on the guideline. My feet, again, they're planted in the same spot. And elevating the hair slightly higher with each progressive section. Checking for visual balance. Okay, and next section. Okay, next section. It's approached in the exact same manner. Remember to increase your elevation slightly. So in my mind, I kind of see like this red laser line. That's a bit oval shape. It's curved and it progressively elevates. So that in my mind, I already give myself a benchmark where I need to be over directing the hair to. Okay, and now with this section is where the head shape starts to round. So to compensate, I'll over direct the hair slightly higher. Make sure you comb the hair super clean from roots to ends. Following our guideline, I just take down that hair, calm, cool, collected. Make sure that every little minute detail is calculated in your mind while you're actually doing it. Okay, now let's do the back. Here, again, I'll over direct all of the back sections to that exact same point, to that prior section, the same elevation, same finger angle. And one strong indicator that will let you know that you're elevating to the proper point is where your guideline is most evident because that shape was just cut in there, the prior section. So for instance, if I elevate the hair way too high or way too low, that guideline becomes really fuzzy. It's not that clear. So that's your guideline telling you that your elevation is off. So when you're over directing to the same point, you just have to slowly comb the hair and get a feel for where you should be cutting the hair at and just slowly drop your fingers right where the guideline is super clean and solid. And then you know you're over directing to the exact same point. So that's a little, um, a little trick that I picked up along the way. It works like a charm. Okay, so again, same intention. 
coming here to right where my guideline is most evident, where it's clearest, thickest, where it visually looks the most perfect. That's my guideline telling me, Lee, right here is where you cut me. So if you really pay attention, um, the hair will start talking to you if you know what to look for. So there's certain indicators. So get that around your head. Just think about it um, the next time you're in the salon doing some haircuts. And once it clicks, it will improve your craft dramatically. Okay, here to the top portion. I'll comb the hair back and then kind of push it forward from the crown area and just to see where the hair naturally parts on itself. And I'll take a slightly diagonal section and notice how this section, it has my guidelines coming from the sides and the back. So from here, I just comb the hair straight out and I connect these two guidelines. So any hair in between, that would be the hair from the top and just knock that down. The challenging part for the top portion is actually your stroke count and making sure that you comb the hair super clean and always ensure that with each section you have some of the guideline through the side area because we have to make sure that our haircuts are always connecting. Okay, so next section, always work in clean, super clean, manageable sections. When your sections are like totally awesome, super clean, you really don't need to use too many clips. Too many clips, they'll slow you down. And for me, it kind of, it kind of now, it, it visually like messes up my work plan. So again, next section, coming here straight out, connecting the sides and the back. Make sure you comb the hair super clean. And here I'm continuing to cut in a graduated shape to the top. And here her hairline, the hair by the hairline is a little bit more sparse. So I'll use a little bit less tension as I move forward from this point on. Just to, the, to allow best for the lower hair density here. Okay, so now on the opposite side, again, it's the same exact technique. I have my guideline that comes from the back and the sides. So here I'm connecting two different guidelines. So I just comb the hair straight out and I'll cut the hair that's in between the two guidelines, yeah. Make sure you're combing the hair super, super clean. Check for balance. And now that we have a new guideline and we just cross check to make sure that it's balanced, it'll give you more confidence to finish off the left top of this haircut. I love to check my balance because when I find that it's even, and it usually is, it gives me confidence. It's just like, um, it's like putting a little star by your name. And when you're cutting and you're visually checking your work and everything's on, you organically will feel more confidence and that sense of confidence will flow into your client because they, they feel that and it's not an artificial kind of fake confidence it's like an actual confidence because you're reinforcing the work that you're actually doing so again working the same technique as the opposite side same angles same length clean manageable sections always stand in front of what you're cutting make sure your eyes are able to see absolutely everything okay and again as I move forward here I'll start to use slightly less tension again to adapt to the lower density of hair through the front
Again, here I just visually assess the shape. And here I finish it with a flat, a flat brush. I just flat wrapping and just beveling the hair for a nice natural finish. So now I'll go through, check off my shape and texturize it. So here, as I texture the hair, I'm looking for an even distribution of the weight. And I always aim to texturize the hair to a point where it's comfortably combed from roots to the ends without any heavy snags. If you're getting those heavy snags, it's a nice indicator that you should go back and just chip into the shape a bit more. Okay, and about combing the hair from the roots to the ends a bit more. If you get a snag as you comb the hair from roots to ends, it can mean a couple of things. What it usually means, if you're cutting even enough, that the density has a variation. So you need to go back and texturize it a bit more. Or it could mean that there's a lot of uneven lengths at that point. So if you have like say two or three sections that don't connect well, or you're starting to, you went longer or shorter or something. Um, so as you comb the hair, it doesn't connect. So as you comb through it, you, it'll snap because you're feeling the heaviness from those lines you put in that do not connect. And as I texturize the hair, I like to have my eyes right in front of what I'm working in. So see how this area is a lot heavier than the rest. So I need to make this portion look like the rest. So the other areas, I just texturize a little bit. And just the heavier parts, I'll texturize more. more. Cause I'm going for again, symmetry and balance with the amount of texture throughout the haircut. Okay, so we're working to the top here and the sides, just connecting those weights. Cause if I know like the sides and the top connected a certain area, I know during the technical cut, I built the corner. So I know where my corners are. So I just go directly to them and then start softening them out until I find that they're visually and aesthetically pleasing, amazing. And it gives you a lot of movement, bounce and texture. Just run your fingers through the hair, get a feel for it. Okay, and now through the top, Come to here nice and smooth. So see how it's it's kind of weird just bouncing out that texture because her hair was texturized kind of heavy before. So sometimes when the hair is already like you already have a lot of pre-existing texture, it's redundant and pointless to texturize it. I just want to get a nice a nice balanced shape. So see how this is heavier than the prior one. So just go in and I'll texturize this so you can kind of mimic what I just saw with the prior section because if this area is heavy and the pass is really sparse you'll get when it falls you're gonna get that the weight unevenness and it'll like totally throw off your haircut okay this last section will be like a fringy area so I'm just like chipping that part off so moving some weight running my fingers through the hair to get a feel for it okay and there we have it enjoy <laughs>